Good evening, everyone. We have a really big show for you tonight. She's a member of the original Rat Pack. Not the Vegas Rat Pack, the Ottawa Rat Pack, but nevertheless, a pack of rats. And uh, she's here tonight. She's the former Deputy Prime Minister of Canada. Everyone, the Honorable Sheila Copps. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for inviting me. First time I meet you? It is. Perhaps it is. the last? Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. I met Kretzian once. He's the only other politician I've ever met. Ex-politician. Oh, really? Yeah. He's he wasn't He wasn't that nice to me, to be honest. Oh, really? What did he do? He was in a rush. He was in a rush. I was working in an art gallery, and he came in, and he really was killing time before going to, like, the dentist. Oh, really? That's something. probably why he was upset. <laughs> yeah, you think so? I hate yeah. the dentist. Oh, I hate the dentist. Yeah, me too. Well, I can't afford the dentist anymore, so it all worked out. Yeah. You have to go to Mexico. Is that where you do your dental No, work? no, I get my dental work done in Canada because so I So why are you implying I should go to Mexico? No, because if you need oh, dental in... work, you can have a vacation and get your teeth done at the same I time. I see, because <laughs> I'm impoverished. I see. No, it's just no dental plan, that's all. Um... <laughs> You're here because uh, one of our producers is your daughter. And that's I'm the only here way because, no, I hear, I'm here because I heard what a fantastic show you had because you had a very brilliant producer. You are, <laughs> you are always on message, huh? You're ready to go. You're ready to go. Absolutely. So, so let's, let's just dive right in. Okay. Okay. What kind of corruption are we dealing with here in Canada now? Honestly speaking. How bad is it? The corruption in Canada? I mean, let's, uh, you know what? Let's start here and move out. Let's start here. So, Charbonneau Commission, did we learn anything? Because I don't know anything about politics, and, and I'm not being facetious, I'm not trying to be coy. I really don't know anymore. I've lost interest. Yeah, because of that. Yeah, because of, I just don't feel like I can take part in any yeah. real way. I feel like my vote means nothing anymore. Yeah. And I'm a you know, reasonably intelligent guy, and my friends are you know, pretty intelligent people, and yet n n all of us feel like we're shackled and we can't do anything. So, tell us the truth. Well, I think at City Hall, honestly, I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues at City Hall, and this goes for City Halls across the country, is that the election laws are not tight enough. Mm. And so what happens is people who receive donations or can receive donations, uh, the federal laws are a lot more strict in terms of what you can do and what you have to disclose and everything. And I think City Hall needs, um, needs a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Who, can I be that vacuum? Like, but can I tell you, before yeah, you totally me. give up on politics, well, I'm there, in the yes. next federal election, yes. one of the issues that is going to be under discussion is the legalization of marijuana. Take a look at what the political parties are doing because um, it, I was out in British Columbia, I was at a youth convention, everybody said, well, nobody's interested in politics, they don't have any interest whatsoever, and I said, well, why don't you bring in, I suggested actually bringing in this youth resolution to the convention, they brought it into the BC convention, it made it to the national convention, it became a policy of the party, and now it's being promoted as one of the, uh, one of the elements of the, the liberal platform under Justin Trudeau. And the Tories are completely against it. Right, And That's there's true. only, at this point, kind of the fight is between the liberals and the Tories, so if you're only interested in legalizing marijuana, it's in your interest to get to the polls. Well, look, yeah, <laughs> I guess if that's all you're interested in. No, 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 in. but I'm just, yeah. I'm using that as an example. Because no, the bottom right. line is, the bottom line is the only place you can really change things is in politics. And I mean, if you think things are bad here, in the United States, just before Christmas, mm. there was a budget item, because in Canada right now you can give up to maybe, federally you can only give up to about $1,500, and it's hard to be bought for that. Absolutely. In the United States, they just, buy in, me for that. They, in, they just increased the right of individual donors to give seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars per candidate in the u.s. now so you cannot Whoa. talk about a democracy when a political candidate can receive seven hundred fifty thousand dollars from a single person That's because crazy, you're bought and paid Sheila. for That's crazy. it's very crazy it's very crazy so i mean even though we're, we're upset in canada i think at the local level at the municipal level mm -hmm. i've seen it in my own community that um, too often the councillors get rather close to the developers and they pass things because they're on their donors list. And I think that piece um, needs to be cleaned up at City Hall. But you know, just the fact that you can speak so openly about it, the fact that it's there, the corruption, and some people talk about it, and thank you for that, and some people don't. And uh, the fact that it's something that, especially in Montreal, like we just have to accept. 
We just have no, to I accept that it's mafia. I don't think you have to accept it. I think that the uh, the thing that I didn't like about Charbonneau, I will mm. say, I think that when you're looking at um, criminality or, or under the table activity, you really need to um, deal with it in the justice system and there should be people charged and they should go to jail. Exactly. But if you just have a commission and you kind of say, okay, come and say whatever you want, and mm -hmm. then the other person says whatever he wants and it carries on, that thing carried on for months and months and really what it did was basically debilitate the whole political system because people looked at it and said, oh, they're all a bunch of crooks and I'm not interested. Right. Um, if if there is uh, wrongdoing and there were there were obviously proof of people getting money under the table, they should go to jail and they should be charged. They should go it. to jail, but the thing, but at the same time, let, let, let me just say that while this Charbonneau thing was going on in Montreal, people were really interested, oh, at least for the first it. six months. No, the no, they were totally months. watching it, but it became like a television show. And well, I, if I use the, the, another analogy, if, you, if you're charged with a crime, let's say. Yeah, and, I may wear, very and well. And in, in, in the normal, um, court you have certain protections you have the right to respond you have the right to question your accusers whatever mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. but in the Charbonneau Commission you didn't have that it was just kind of like reality television of what's going on at City Hall and there were lots of people who said lots of things some of which were right or true some which weren't true and yeah. the not true statements just hung out there like a giant fart in church a fart in church how yeah. dare you bring that language into my <laughs> show this well, wholesome show well, um, okay, so that's a Newfoundland expression. My husband's a Newfie. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I love the Newfies. They're such nice people. Yeah. Well, that he was the one yeah. who introduced that expression to me, and I think it holds very well. It's a bad, <sighs> a bad analogy. God, I'll be honest. You didn't cheer me up. You didn't cheer, cheer me up. No. So no, and I mean, especially since like no, you didn't cheer me up at all. Give us a crazy, uh, crazy story. To make okay, us feel the better. reason. The I reason have a story I want to ask about for the record. Can I have? Okay. I, I don't know sure. if you're going to remember this story, but I got it from your daughter. Oh, okay. And apparently, Prince Charles asked you for a little advice once upon a time. He did. He did. He did. Tell us about that. I'd love to hear about that. Well, that was at the time that he that Lady Di was still... Um, a bit of a minx. A still, she, she was, um, they, had, they were on the verge of getting a divorce. Ah. And so he asked me for divorce advice since I had been divorced. Really? And we were sitting in the back of his... Re this sort of limo, because when when uh, what any was the limo made out of human bones? No, I don't know anything about the limo. The limo children's just... teeth. <laughs> no, 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 he was just sitting in the back privately, and he said, you know, in Britain, obviously, if if I do get a divorce, it's very difficult for the public right. to accept that because the royal family doesn't have that right La -di -da, and sure. uh, and so he was saying well how do you get divorced and survive in Canadian politics because mm -hmm. I had been divorced and mm -hmm. I kind of said well um, it's it, first of all here I think you just have to be open about it and carry on and anyway so he asked me for divorce advice really but it was very quiet between the two of us there was nobody else in the limo the the driver was in the front and uh, it was just kind of a how conversation strange that he asked you just because you've been divorced do you think maybe he was mostly saying like hey Sheila I'm gonna be on the market soon <laughs> No, no, he was uh, he was very nice to me, and when I when nice I quit I when I quit politics for the GST, he wrote me a lovely letter. I've I have three or four long letters from him. That was pretty cool when you quit for the. I mean, you went back. To be yeah. fair, you yeah. totally flip flopped and totally went back to the party. But that was pretty cool <laughs> that uh, you you called all old hot dog eating Cretien on that whole uh, GST thing, which if you don't know is uh, you know Cretien said that he would get rid of. The GST. Well, the party did too. The, the party, whole party said that, and then we never did. Yeah. But I was the one who'd gone on television, and I was sent to the CBC during the election, and the the the. The b they sold you out. They basically didn't think I was. It was going to happen. I said it will happen. It will happen. I'm so sure it will happen that mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen, I'll resign my seat, which was kind of a dumb thing to say given that in <laughs> politics. Well, you and live, then, you learn, and then, Sheila. and then, my friend Paul Martin, mm -hmm. who Your in buddy. the end, uh, his office used to call it the Get Sheila Tax, because we had three years to get rid of the GST in the in the first mandate. Mm -hmm. Elected in '93, we said we were going to take three years because we had to get the financial house in order first. Right. And then uh, uh, we were kind of saying, well, change it a bit, right? It doesn't have to be, because they used to have the manufacturer sales tax, and then they replaced it with the GST. You could bring in a new tax, take, change it. You're a, killing me. You're killing me, Sheila. What are you talking about? Taxes, GST. But anyway, so. This is a friendly, funny show. <laughs> 
Well, they used to call it the get Sheila tax because they knew that I had made this dumb statement and so that that was how they were going to get rid of me. Oh, I see. Get, so I, get her out. Yeah, get her exactly. Back. No, get her out. Get her out. But really? they wanted me oh, to hold, they wanted me to wear it and not resign. You know what? And I wanted to resign. I want I want to talk about uh, a lot of what you're saying right now actually when we come back. We're just going to take a short break. So we'll stick, you, you'll stick around? Yeah. For sure. Where are you going to go, right? Yeah. We'll be right back. Tony's pretty good. Very good, yeah. There's 50 good reasons to love the end. Cause the job is finally done. Time to relax, oh yeah, time to have fun. Cause I'm her sweet delight. Cause the weather's out of sight. What could be more refreshing than Newport menthol cigarettes? Newport refreshes while you smoke because only Newport has a fine white filter, menthol and mint, and a blend of great tasting tobaccos. Clean, cool pleasure you won't find in any other cigarette. Newport smokes fresher. Sheila Copps. That will never be in front of my name. Why not? Well, one, it's an actual title, right? Like, they might say the majestic Demetrius. They might say, nice enough guy, Demetrius. But I don't think honorable. But, um, hey, I have this question here I wanted to ask you. Oh, yeah, this is really I want to talk about. I think feminism is in a tough spot right now. I'm a feminist. Um, I think you should suffer as much as we do. It's, it's uh, awful <laughs> being a man, and I want. I, I hope it's as awful to be a w woman. But um, I uh, equal opportunity sufferer. Equal opportunity suffering. Absolutely. I'm, I'm for that. Yeah, absolutely. But um, there's. I mean, but but now you know, in the political spectrum, like, isn't it all a ruse that it's equal for women? I think right now it's not just political. We still live in a society that's pretty sexist. It's the 21st um, century. Yeah, like, I know it's why? sad. It's crazy. It's sad. It's crazy. My daughter's 27. When she was born, to, in, she was the in first, 1984. She was born in 1987. Was she? Yeah. Oh. 1987. Sorry. 1984 to was the year I came to Parliament. But oh, anyway, that's okay. That's I okay. mixed those two monumental events yes. up. But anyway, so so I had I had uh, a child in, uh, and I figured by the time she grew up, yeah, it'd be e even Stephen. If you graduate from Concordia University or any university across the country, mm -hmm. simply by virtue of the fact that you are a young man, you can expect to earn twenty one thousand dollars more than the same woman graduate. To this day, right now, it's bananas. Before it was it was worse. Now it's getting better, but it's still it's still. It's Second. crazy. It is. It is, but it's crazy. You're living with uh, changing, changing people's attitudes and changing people's views is difficult to do because people like to s stay in their comfort zone, right? Well, you know what, May? You know, we need a, we need a female prime minister, quite frankly, and not and not your pal Kim, who was very nice, <laughs> but it didn't work. You out. should get her on the show. Uh, yeah, I'd love to have her on the show. Is she available? Well, I can email anyone? her for you, for Jeez, sure. this yeah. is not a nice lady. <laughs> what a nice lady. Can I tell you how I would win over the female demographic if I was running for, for office? I think this would totally work. Okay, and you should tell this to your friends, your powerful, okay, okay. powerful Illuminati friends. So um, this is what I would do. I would remove all taxes from gynecological products, hygiene products, Kotex. There shouldn't be tax on Kotex. Now, you, did you know about the Kotex tax? I did not. Okay, I fought against the Kotex tax. You did? Is that true? In That's unbelievable. In 1982, Frank Miller brought a budget. The cartoonist. The no, no, this oh. is like an old politician. Okay. Frank Miller was, was the former premier of Ontario. Briefly, mm -hmm. he lost the election. But when he was finance minister, he brought in a tax on Kotex. And we had all these people <laughs> protesting. They were sending used tampons and 
the mail, which we were presenting in the House of the Ontario Legislature. I'm not kidding. This was an issue, because at that point there were no, uh, there was no uh, tax on sanitary products, toothpaste, things that were considered essential items. Absolutely, and and this. And was they brought them in, and we fought it at the time. But oh. then you, you. Um, you know, you're you're a bit of a hero, aren't you? <laughs> you're a bit of a I'm hero. a tampon fighting anti-tax. Um, well, <laughs> it, it, you're absolutely right. It, it shouldn't have to be paid. However, you did bring up something else, which I would love to talk about. Um, but you mentioned just the house and question period. What the fuck's going on, Sheila? They sound like a bunch of assholes, a bunch of gorillas in there. Well, here, here, and yes, yes. <laughs> what is this? It's theater. It's gross. It it's bad theater. Well, it's could, bad maybe, theater. Maybe you could come and, and give some lessons on how to. I'll speak give him some fucking present. tips, yo, Harper. <laughs> Let out one of these beats. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dredd. You know, to Tony isn't uh, Canadian. No? He's American. Canadian citizenship. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, so you're dual. I'm dual. I am Excellent. Dual. Yeah. Do you, do you have dual, dual citizenship? No, I don't. No, you're just a Canadian. Strictly a Canadian. It, I'm not as proud to be Canadian anymore. It used to be. I used to be so much more excited about it when I was yeah. a kid. I was so. I was like, "Wow, we're pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be a Canadian." I wouldn't put a maple leaf on my backpack if you put a gun to my head right now. Really? No, I wouldn't. I think it would be embarrassing. I. I would rather put like a, a Jerry Garcia patch. He had, he had like a logo. Now, how about Santana? Sent. He's too old, I guess. Oh, <laughs> Sheila, I have so much to teach I you about see rock Santana and roll. I go concerts every year. You do not. <laughs> I do. I saw, really? I saw him in February in Guadalajara. It, is it true you had dinner with Sting once? No, not Sting. I had dinner with... Um, with who? Um, oh, my God. This is terrible. The crew, he's a, a kind of a... He's a really nice guy. I like, I like when you tap my arm like that. <laughs> he's... Um, oh, my God, I can't remember his name. From England. He had a great Tom joke Jones? of it. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'll think about it in a second. But no, he's famous. He's kind of a so-called lounge lizard now, but he's a pretty good singer. Nick Drake and uh, no. Nick Cave. No, Nick Drake. No. Um, anyway, never mind. I'm I'm terrible on names. We'll I'll cut this it. part out, guys. Cut that part cut out. Cut this part out. Put in this, uh, the the marching you stop swastikas. Can for a second and I'll I'll find out. You know who I'm talking about. Okay. He's New got hair like it stands up like a, his Rod hair Stewart? looks. Like, yes, Rod Stewart. Oh. oh sorry. Hey, hey, as soon, oh, as, sorry. As, as, soon sorry. as you said made spider gestures he in has, your he hair. He has hair like a rooster. That's what. But he he's really nice. He is was he? very nice. Oh, my God. He was so nice. And KD Lang was at the same event, and she was not nice. No. You were saying people not being nice. Oh, man. She was. Really? Viciously not, not nice. Come on. I would never have thought And I would that. have thought the reverse, right? Totally. But we you would, know what? We well, were at an event. It yeah. was re in relation to the Junos, giving out awards. Wh and so what are those? What are those? You know the Junos. I wouldn't know. I'm on the internet. Yeah. Well, the Junos were giving an award we to Rod Stewart and KD Lang. I'm not exactly sure why. Okay. And they, it was Warner, I think, was their label. So they had a dinner the night before mm -hmm. when I was uh, in Toronto. And I was invited to the dinner, so I sat beside... Uh, at the table with Rod Stewart, right behind us was the Queen, you're addressing Quincy, your daughter. Quincy I'm Jones. right here. No, because I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. The, it was Quincy Jones. Was, was That's there a big too. deal. I mean, That's it was a like deal. a great, great, great dinner. So KD Lang shows up late, like seriously late, mm -hmm. and she's got this giant great coat full of mud on. She's like, "Where is this photograph?" Because they all had to get their pictures taken. Okay. Meanwhile, Rod Stewart is sitting there, and every person who went up to him. He r took autographs, spoke really nicely, like he didn't get ticked off. Hmm. He said, and he, he made said, the best he of said, it. He said, I'm up and down like a bride's nighty. <laughs> and I still remember that. I thought uh, it was very it's, funny. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. But, I mean, you're, you're no stranger to fame and great parties. You were at the Oscars once. I've been uh, to a few great parties, yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. what was it like going to the Oscars? Well, it was more m my daughter's shtick because I don't even watch the Oscars. Well, now, is this terrible? But as, no, a, nobody in, does. as a matter of principle, I just don't. But you watch movies. Oh, I love movies. Yeah. I do love movies. And I'm very upset that Sony pulled that movie. I think that was a dumb move. Wh which movie? The movie that the... Uh, that you were down there for? No, no, no. This, this week, Sony pulled the movie which supposedly um, 
Kim uh, Kim Il Jung. Oh, uh, the, um, the, the, the Seth North Rogen Korean. thing. Yes, the Seth, the Seth Rogen. Rogen uh, well, he's a hack. I mean, he deserves whatever he gets, that guy. Who, Seth Rogen? Blech. No, but it doesn't matter. You shouldn't pull a movie. No, you That's shouldn't pull point. a movie. It's you not, shouldn't pull a movie. It's not Seth Rogen. And the, actually, it's, it's Matt, uh, Matt Damon is the uh, producer, isn't he? I uh, think. Matt, I don't know. One he's involved anyway. in everything. He's another monster. Um, Man, you're hard to please. <laughs> well, I'm just going through these questions. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, <laughs> hey, I got a question. Okay. Is it true your house got trashed once on New Year's Eve by your Hellion daughter? Uh, like 300 people showed up at this party? There's probably a few more stories that I could tell you about her, but most really? of them are unprintable. No, tell us something that she would be humiliated by right now. Just no, I, I will oh, not. Oh, no, no, she's giving me a no. I will not. Okay. Oh, I you're a good mom. Her. No. You're a good mom. There's enough other people out in the world to humiliate your children. You don't have to do it yourself. <laughs> don't I know it. Is she your favorite child? Uh, well, she's my only sort of, I have three stepchildren. Yes. So she's But you don't love my them natural. as much. You don't love them as much. Don't say it. She's my favorite natural born child. Oh, your favorite natural born? It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Hey. Of, of okay. course she's my favorite. Of course she's your of favorite. She, she was part of your entourage in the early years. You were my the entourage. first the first um, breastfeeding member of parliament. That's right. The, the man had no breasts. That's why that's they could right. breastfeed. Well, you, yeah, yeah. You gave birth. <laughs> Did you take nine months off maternity leave? No. You I, didn't. I, I, I just threw her into a kennel. She was born on... Uh, the 26th of March, and on the 4th of April, I was in the House of Commons watching uh, Ronald Reagan speak. And by the time he finished his speech, which was rather long, I had a giant stain. Whoa! All the way there from the breast milk. That's Le amazing. Breast milk. That's cool, That's cool, man. Six days or eight days later. That's cool. So, no, I didn't leave the whole time. Now, I think I'm embarrassing people by what I'm saying on the Not show. me. <laughs> Not me, that's for sure. I, you know, it's it, like, uh, you know, you're you're pretty irreverent. I'm actually kind of shocked you ended up, you studied English literature just like I did, and French. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're the most successful English literature graduate of all time, <laughs> by far. And, uh, like, like, I'm, you know, you, you you seem like someone who's pretty down to earth. I'm surprised you ended up in politics, quite frankly. Well, politics been... is so much fun. It's like yeah, but what about raising your family and like doing all that stuff? Like that takes a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, but the thing you know? is, when you're in politics, first of all, when I, it's kind of like being self-employed in one respect. Even though you're employed by the people and you go in, in elections, but you get to set your own times and stuff. So when I became a minister, I said like I don't do breakfast meetings, which mm -hmm. most people can't tell their boss like I'm not coming to a breakfast right. meeting. Right. But I just said, you know, I have a daughter. She's got to get off to school, and I'm not going to leave the house at 7 a.m. So I was able to set the schedules according to my needs because you're kind of like the boss. Yeah, you're so totally it makes the boss. it it makes it easier that way. It's and pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and you get a lot of support too. You're okay. Hey, <laughs> Tony, do you have a question for Sheila about politics or uh, politics? <laughs> politics. <laughs> Tony doesn't like politics. Oh. It's okay. He's never yeah. voted. Oh, oh no! I did once, and I I, I I'm ashamed of it. I I've lost sleep over it. Really? Oh, really? Caught up in a crisis. Oh come on! Take part, Tony. I checked a little box. Oh, I take part. Yeah, I know what I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm working things behind the scenes, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pulling the strings. <laughs> you pulling the strings? <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> you see what I'm working with now, here? Now apparently you're a cosmic wonder, also. That's right. That's what I yeah. mean. Would you like to ask him a question about the Okay, future? I would like to ask you a question about okay. the fire that has been seen on Mars recently, what? this fire week. Oh. They had a fire scene on Mars, and I'd like to what? know whether you said it. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. No, they did actually find, they found evidence of a phosphorus fire on Mars. Come They're on. still I'm not deliberating. No one knows. It is that no one knows where this thing came from necessarily. It might be one thing, might be another. Hence the two of uh, spheres. Mm, okay. Very do, you, good. do you have a personal question? Something you want to ask about your daughter? Will she ever get married? Um, or? Okay. No. Ask. Ask if. She's no. You ask. You okay. Ask. Okay. You ask. The cards will tell me when. When will she get married? Because I made her a bet. Okay. Okay. And she bet me that she wouldn't get married until she was thirty. And that's I bet okay. her, that's good. I bet her a significant, well, not that significant, but a significant amount of money to say that she would be married before the age of 30. And now she's turning 
28 Don't in March. Don't say her age. Don't say her age. Oh, you totally She's turning it. 28 in March. She's pretty young. But I think she's got a very serious boyfriend, so I'm thinking she might lose the bet. C can I tell you something? I've met him. He's a very nice boy. He's You'd sweet. like you to have him in the family. He's totally sweet. Totally we have the same sweet. birthday. Did you know that? Oh, did you? The exact oh, same birthday. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So? Yeah, you're right. You won the bet. I did. Getting I married it. before 30. Danelle, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. And on that note, let's wrap it up. Hey, Sheila. It's a wrap. Thanks a lot. Great being Thank here. You. A wonderful show. Thank e you. Everybody, yeah, check us <laughs> online. Ugh. Oh, that was you great. You never did your scotch. I did. Okay, I was drinking the whole go. time. I was drinking the whole time. Mm. This is like a Tremont on power, only it's not water. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Do they have water? Is that they, they pretend? No, they put white. They put